I am a pastor to prostituted women, a calling I did not see coming. Let me explain. Over a decade ago, while searching an online job bank, I ran across a ministry, New Friends, New Life, whose mission was to transform the lives of women. It was exactly what I had been looking for. You see, I had spent the first part of my professional career in social work, but had come to the realization that full-time ministry was where I belonged. So when I saw that posting, I was thrilled right up until I read the rest, seeking out of prostitution. No way in the world, I thought to myself, I do not want to work with prostitutes. Now, to be clear, my resistance to working with prostituted women was not because I thought their lives were unsalvageable. The problem was not them, it was me. At that time, frankly, I didn't think I had what it took to work with women who had been so wounded. But that was 14 years ago, and I still work and minister with prostituted women. But I want to let you know one of the reasons for my change of heart. You see, I realized those women and I, we had something in common. Childhood sexual trauma. In fact, studies show that 95% of prostituted women have histories of sexual abuse in childhood. 70% report incest in childhood. So we know that sexual trauma makes women and girls vulnerable to prostitution. But here's something else I've come to know in my work with prostituted women. Bible teaching that is trauma-informed can help those women and girls overcome those vulnerabilities. Trauma-informed Bible teaching is what I get to do every week. You see, trauma-informed, uh, a trauma-informed approach is sensitive to what happened to a prostituted woman rather than looking at what is wrong with her. It is helping, but with a deep awareness that what happened to a prostituted woman, sexual abuse, incest, rape, Parental abandonment, neglect, impacts her psychologically and spiritually. And so I knew that my approach to teaching this vulnerable population had to be a trauma-informed approach. So along with trauma-informed therapy, because you cannot leave that out, along with trauma-informed therapy, trauma-informed Bible teaching, restores women rather than re-victimizes them. Now, in my work with women for all these many years, I've come to know something about some of their experiences. A majority of the women that I have seen have experienced biblical teaching that is harmful. In fact, Many of the women have come to believe that God made them fundamentally subordinate to men. This notion of women's subordination, come on, y'all, you know it's nothing new. It can be traced, though, back to early church fathers. Well, these are the beautiful women that I get to teach but it can be traced back to early church fathers. One church father that I want to talk about today is Tertullian. Tertullian was a second century Christian theologian, and here's what he had to say about the nature of woman. You are the devil's gateway. You destroyed so easily 
God's image, man. Well, according to Tertullian, woman, the first woman, was to blame for man's disobedience to God. But not only that, as you can see from that second sentence, Tertullian believed that it was only the man or the male who was created in God's image, not the woman. So what are the implications of that? Well, because Tertullian was venerated by the church, parishioners, including women, embraced and perpetuate to this day what I call an unhealthy theology of womanhood that at its core is grounded in patriarchy, misogyny, and sexism, or what I like to call PMS. And so I knew that my approach needed to be different because there was absolutely no way that I was going to re-victimize prostituted women and use the Bible to do it. I found my answer. I found my answer in womanism. Womanism is rooted in the everyday experiences of black women and how we solve problems. Womanism is against all forms of oppression against all people. Womanism is communal. We are committed to the survival and wholeness of entire people, male and female. Womanist biblical interpretation is my method of teaching the Bible with prostituted women. It is a, it is a resource and not a roadblock. I came to womanism as a seminary student. I remember vividly sitting in a class called Womanist Theology in Understanding Literature of African American Women. I remember my professor, Dr. Stacy Floyd Thomas, asking the students that day in class, when was the first time you realized being a woman was a problem? That day, in that class, in that moment, I wept. I also woke up. I woke up to womanism. Womanism informs my biblical approach to teaching. And here are two other reasons why. Biblical scholar and womanist, Dr. Valerie Bridgman, says that when womanists interpret the Bible, we approach it with goals in mind. And one such goal is for human flourishing that is unhindered by oppressive systems. Similarly, Mitzi J. Smith says that when womanists read the Bible, we read with sass. Sass is an act of resistance against race and class and sexism. So, when we read the Bible, when we interpret the scriptures, we will do at least three things. When a womanist interprets a text, we will remember, remember, there's an R-E and a dash and member. We will remember women's intrinsic worth and value. Not only that, but when womanists read and interpret the Bible, we reinterpret the text, challenging any interpretation that is oppressive to women and girls and any other marginalized community. Third, when a woman, womanist interprets the biblical text, we recover women's purpose, not as subordinate to men, but as equal partners and collaborators with men to make maximum impact in the world. I remember the first time I used this strategy in my work with women. We had a Bible class of about 35 women. All had been trafficked, prostituted, or danced in the strip club, some kind of sexual commercial exploitation. 
And I had the women look at two biblical texts. Uh, well, one biblical text from two translations. Uh, Genesis chapter 1, 27. The first text was read in a pretty traditional translation that probably most Bible readers use. And here's what that translation says. God created man in his image. No big surprise there, right? Then I had the ladies read the same text from a different translation, more gender-inclusive translation. Then God created humankind in God's image. The room went in an uproar. One woman said, humankind? Wait a minute, that's me. In an instant, that woman discovered her story in the biblical text, a story that she had never seen or heard before up until that point. So the next time you hear a biblical teaching, I wonder if you could ask yourself two questions. Two questions that this woman, who was shocked and surprised and a bit angry, a bit angry asked herself. This woman, who when she was eight years old, was thrown away by her mother, taken in by her uncle, who was a pimp, and trafficked from the time she was eight years old. She asked herself these questions, and I want you to ask yourself these same two questions. The first question is this. When you hear this biblical teaching, will a survivor of sexual trauma hear that same text as a road map or a road block to their healing? And second, would a prostituted woman hear that text in a way that would re-victimize her or remember her? Thank you. <laughs>